All right, on this video, we're gonna talk about the suppression of precious metals. All right, this is one of the kind of quietly more brilliant moves that I think we've done, you know, as banksters. We've been creating literally millions and millions of what we call phantom ounces of gold and silver. Because see what we do through like, you know, our banks, we actually, you know, like SLV, for example, or GLD, these are like, you know, ETFs, right? Electronically traded funds. The beauty of an electronically traded fund, who's going to know? Who's going to know that there's no real, you know, silver or gold behind it, right? So we actually go and type in all these, you know, ounces of gold and silver that don't even exist in physical form. If people ever caught on to this, if they actually demanded to have their gold and silver in physical form, obviously it's not going to happen. Because, see, actually it was discovered recently, you know, the CFTC actually, uh, there was actually a hearing, you know, they were trying to get to the bottom of this. And luckily we've pretty much got most everybody now in positions of power at the CFTC or the CME. I mean, you name it, if it's a regulatory group, they're on our payroll. We pretty much get all our buddies nowadays from like Goldman Sachs and we just kind of transplant them, you know, into positions of power and all these, you know, supposedly regulatory groups. So luckily, you know, if you've noticed, I mean, when they had the savings and loan scandal in the 90s, there was like thousands of arrests, right? And that was like a drop in the bucket compared to the trillions of dollars in fraud that we've been doing lately, you know, with the bailouts. And, you know, bailouts are great because, you know, all that money eventually goes to all of our bankster buddies. And, you know, what's really cool is, you know, whenever we create that money out of thin air, you know, we get to, you know, make interest as far as the Federal Reserve. We actually make interest on the very creation of all that money. So, of course, we're all about creating money. But when it comes to precious metals, you see, the more people believe in precious metals, the more it's a threat to our fiat debt-based monetary system. So we can't have that. We can't have precious metals gaining, you know, credibility. We can't have people thinking that, you know, precious metals are a safe place to put their money. So we've got to do our jobs. You know, we've got to make sure and flood the markets with, you know, millions and millions of these ounces of phantom gold and phantom silver because that artificially, you know, messes up the whole supply demand thing. And that way we can keep the prices down. Okay. We've been able to do this for decades now. I mean, if there was actually... If people really knew how little silver there is on the planet right now, they'd all be snatching it up because what's happened is we've already got all the gold. People think that there's gold at Fort Knox. <laughs> there hasn't been gold in Fort Knox for years. We've already got all the gold, okay? We've got that controlled. But Silver is a little different. It's a little harder to get a hold of, you know. So we came up with these brilliant plans, and now we just destroy the silver. We've got all these new industrial uses for it. We use it for everything you could think of. It's a great antimicrobial, you know. We use it in all different types of electronics because it's a great conductor. And as long as we can keep the prices down by just creating, you know, tons and trillions of ounces out of thin air, then it's going to keep the prices down. And this just encourages the companies to kind of use it all up so it just disappears. That way, the average person doesn't have any way of protecting themselves from when our debt-based fiat currencies eventually crash, which of course they all do eventually. There's been over 600 of them on record and of course they've all crashed. It's not if, it's just when they're going to crash. But we don't want to be in the average person any way to fight back in whatever the new currency is, right? Because you know we're going to have our fingers on that one too. But because these debt-based currencies only have a certain life cycle, and we're kind of getting close to the end of this one now. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been keeping interest rates basically at zero. And we've kind of got to keep them there because see the debt's so big now. If interest rates creep up even just a half point, the system's going to crumble. So I guarantee you the interest rates are going to be staying really low as long as we can stay in control. So 
this whole precious metal thing, we've got to destroy all of the silver that we can, okay? And then, shh, all the banksters and any of those people that are smart enough, they're actually trying to get a hold of physical silver, physical gold. Because when you own physical silver or physical gold that you actually control, that you actually have in your possession, then the banksters can't get a hold of it. Darn it, I hate it when that happens. But you know, we're able to manipulate the prices at least through our you know, ETFs and all of our phantom silver and we're able to keep the prices down. So we're going to keep doing this and keep doing this and try and either destroy as much silver as we can because see, right now, people don't really know this, but right now, there's a lot less silver on this planet above ground than there is gold. And yet, gold is still way more valuable than silver. Doesn't really make any sense, does it? But that's the beauty of our system. We can manipulate everything. We can brainwash them. And that's exactly what we do. So, silver and physical gold as you can. Just stash it away because there's going to come a time soon where we're not going to be able to get any new monies created, any new loans to keep paying the interest on the old debts. I mean, heck, the Chinese and the Ur Iranians, they're already going around us. They're actually dealing now in commodities in their own currencies. The rest of the world caught on and started doing this. If the dollar wasn't the reserve currency anymore, oh my God, this whole house of cards would come crumbling down like that. So make sure and stash away as much physical gold and silver as you can and don't tell those stupid sheeple, all right? Because we don't want them having any way to fight back. All right, Till next time, between you and I, buy physical gold and silver, all right? Because it's not if. The more you've got, the better shape you're going to be in coming out the other side.